be seated here. You, you can be seated. We'll read it together. You can be seated here. God bless you. I'm at Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12. And if you have us, say praise the Lord. Now, I want you to play, pay close, close attention to this right here. He said, take heed, brother, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Now, he writing to, he's writing to save people here. He ain't writing to sinners. He's writing to the church. So it's possible to be on fire for the Lord and sold out and things happen and you move from having faith to a position of unbelief. You say, how can it, it happens all the time? And I, Lord, help me to stay on track tonight. But I, I think what happens is people jump out too early. They don't allow God to finish what he's doing. And so in the worst time, you jump out and say, God's let me down when he's not finished. If you just stay right there, you'll have a testimony of look what the Lord has done. Well, that's been my experience anyway. Anybody else had that experience? That yes. Aren't you glad you didn't jump out when you thought you should have jumped out, but somehow God kept you and, yes. and departed from the living God? I love that right there. But let me move on. Verse 13, but exhort one another daily. Encourage one another daily. Strengthen one another daily. Why it is called today, lest any of you be hardened. Ooh, hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You see that? So, it is possible. It's possible for me as a pastor. To become hard my heart to become hard for it, 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 it is isn't it true that it's possible for all of us according to the word for our hearts to become hard and calloused I'll be honest with you there's been seasons in my life where I was like that and and the good thing for me was I was a pastor of the church and couldn't quit because if I could have ran, I would have ran, but I couldn't run. Because, all oh, you've been running after me. I said, hey, come on, somebody. Amen. We've all been through seasons where our hearts get hard and we get a little cold in the Lord. It can happen. And let me tell you that it is easier to reach somebody that is backslid than it is somebody who is backsliding. It's true. It is easier to reach somebody who is already backslid than it is somebody who is backsliding. Mm. <laughs> yeah. See, when, when, when a person begins to backslide, the first thing they do is they hide. They pretend. When somebody actually falls out of church, a lot of times you look at them and say, I had no idea. Because they're putting on such a front that they're really hiding what's going on in their heart and in their mind and their thinking. When we come together, everybody praise the Lord. Everybody, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, doing wonderful and everything. And the whole time, you're dying on the inside. Things are happening outside of church. Yes. That we pretend that everything's going all right in our life. Hmm? So they don't reveal really what's in their heart. Hello, somebody. You really don't reveal. And I, I want you to hear this. What's in your heart will eventually come out. You can't hide it forever. It will come out. Are you hearing me? That's why it's so hard to reach somebody who's on the, on the road to backsliding. It's because they're such good hiders. They hide. And they're not honest. The one way to, the, listen, if you feel any kind of, of, you know, Brother Green mentioned dryness and so, some folks mentioned dryness this morning. That's just part of it. But I'm going to tell you, you need to be honest about it. 
Don't try to hide it. Be honest. I'm dry. I'm cold. I need prayer. Uh, and I don't know if you can handle an honest pastor or not, because what I see, the majority of them, they, and I, well, I almost said a bunch of, they're not lying, but, but they just but they portray an image that's just not real. And I just, listen, I'm in this thing for the long haul, and so I'm going to be honest with you. If I need prayer, I'm going to tell you I need prayer. I got some of you on my speed dial right now that you know I call you, that when my family needs prayer or this church needs prayer, boom, I'm calling. Why? Because I believe that you got the power to touch the Lord, and I'm not ashamed to tell you that I need some prayer in my life. I'm not ashamed to tell you I need the church tonight. I'm not ashamed to tell you I need you tonight. No, come on, somebody. Amen. Well, let me let me let, 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 let me get going on. And and, and number two, and, and this is the this is the, not only do they hide, but they justify. They start justifying themselves. I want to say this to you, everybody. Let me have your ear right now. If I have ever let you down as a pastor, I want you to forgive me. I didn't ask to be pastor. I didn't ever make up in my mind one day I won't be a pastor of the church. He called me. And I'll be honest with you, when I look at myself and I look at other people, other people would be a lot better pastor than what I, I'm just telling you. I understand that I'm not perfect. But I do love you. I do love God. I do got a call of God on my life. And it's real easy to sit there and nitpick the shortcomings in the lives of people when all it is is a justification of why you can't be faithful to God and you nitpicking the church. Uh, when, see, when you got saved, you loved the church. But now that you're getting cold in your spirit, ain't it amazing? You see every wart and every blemish in the pastor, the elder, people sitting in church, you pointing fingers because all you're doing is trying to justify why you're in the condition you're in. Come on, can I get it? Well... And let me just say this to you. Please don't judge me by the voice of my enemies. Judge me by my actions. I'm here every service. Come on, somebody. I've never stole your money. I've never took advantage of you. This church has never took advantage of you. If anything, we've been here when nobody else was here. Come on, somebody. All it is is justifying as they are on the road of backsliding. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Glory. Can I, hey. Let me tell you something about justifying. This ain't what I'm preaching about, but it feels good right now. Let me tell you about justifying. As a pastor, let me, let me make sure. There is not one person in here. There's one. There's one person in here. That I have felt a check on in my spirit. One. That's in here now. And all that is. Is as the shepherd of the, the church. The Lord say. Pay attention to her. Pray for him. Okay. I feel. I don't feel anything in here. Towards. I feel good tonight. I feel good about you tonight. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? A pastor knows, and an elders know, a church family knows, when there's something going on in the life of somebody. And that's not to scare you. That's just saying we're not stupid. Yeah. And when they say, well, I'm missing church because I want to spend time with my family. Listen, I applaud anybody who wants to spend some time with their family. But we also know when all that is is the justifying thing to cover really what's going on in your heart. We, we, we encourage vacation. We encourage time with your family. We inter encourage time getting away with uh, We don't have a problem with that. But I do have a problem when the Holy Ghost is saying, check this. And then when we talk to people, they're putting a smoke screen up trying to cover really what's going in their heart. I'm just telling you, it's easier to reach somebody who's already backslid than it is somebody who is on the road to backsliding. Third point, and I'm moving to what I really got to give you tonight. They become defensive. When somebody's on the road to backslide, they get mad easy. I mean, uh, uh, hey, hey, I've been missing you. Whoa. You need prayer? Whoa. I mean, you're scared to say anything because they get mad real quick. 
Can I tell you tonight that if you're hiding, you're justifying, you get angry easy, you may want to put the brakes on while you still got time to get renewed in the Holy Ghost. Because if you keep on that road to backsliding, you're going to get mad at the church, mad at the preacher. Can't nobody tell you nothing. And then eventually you're going to end up backsliding. Can I tell you, I've lived for God long enough to know you ain't got to backslide. You can be honest and just come up and say, Lord, it's me. I'm cold. I'm angry. And I need you to renew me in the Holy Ghost. Come on, can I get a witness? Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, renew me. Yeah. Lord, I, I, I said I was going to not preach long. This altar here is for everybody. Not new converts. Not just new converts. Yeah. It's for everybody. And don't listen, don't please don't, 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 don't pretend that you never need an altar in your life. Right. Don't pretend that you're always strong. It's not good for the church. I mean, I appreciate Brother Shelton. Two weeks ago, he testified about getting so mad. He said, man, I got mad. He said, not cussing mad. He threw that in and let you know he's still saved. Huh? <laughs> Come on, somebody. I got mad, but no, no, no. But it, it encouraged me because I got utmost confidence in this brother. But to realize that he has bad days, it helps me to go through my bad days. And when everybody acting like they Superman or Wonder Woman and you never have a bad day, it's discouraging. It causes us to hide and be hypocrites. I would rather have people who are honest and say, hey, I need some prayer today. I need to pray through today. I need a refreshing of the Holy Ghost in my life. Is it just me or would you rather have a church that's real? That see some people like Sister Cordell, Brother Cordell, my mom, Sister Sherry, Sister Linda, all in here, Sister Joy. Get people get up and say, I need prayer today. I'm fighting the devil that's too big for me. I need you to buy. I wouldn't feel less about them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, hey, hey, yeah, I just like that. I need prayer too. Thank God for a real church. I said, thank God for a real church. I said, thank God for a real church. I said, thank God for a real church. Let me give you this. A man, I, I said, boy, that, that took too long. My introductory, introduction right there took too long. Let me, let me read this to you. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. This is to the, the Ephesian church, or the, the church in Ephesus. He said, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember from whence thou art fallen and repent. Do thy first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. So here their, their heart has got crow, cold. They, they, they've left their, their first love. So, you know, I'm not for sure if they're complete, completely backslid or on the road to backsliding. But the bottom line is they need a fresh touch of the Lord. Can I get a witness? Now, and see, and, and let, let me, when, and how many of you would testify with me? That when you get saved, the first thing that comes into your life is a love. A love for the house of God. A love for preaching. A love for the people of God. There's a love there. There's a, a, I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm glad to be in the house of God. I love every one of you. And glory to God. And, and there's something about love. It covers a multitude of sin. Amen. See, if we really told you about your kid. You could be fighting mad. But you love that baby so much, you don't see nothing wrong. And they can be 45 years old. My mom, listen, mom, you say something bad about me. My mom, I don't see that. He's a good kid. Yeah, she loved me. There's something about love. It cut, come on, somebody. And we got to be like that in this church. Mm, okay, let, 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 let me help you here. Now, he said, he said to test to see. If you are in the faith, I just want to give you a couple of things that you, this has got to be there. Don't let your heart grow cold. Don't backslide. This is no time to get indifferent with the things of the Lord. This is a time to keep a fresh fire in us and to be honest with God. I think that's the key is being honest. I think a lot of things would be diverted if we could just be honest. Just be honest. Just 
be honest about it. Man, 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 I'm trying to get out of here. I'm hungry. I got chili dogs waiting on me. I'm hungry. But I keep feeling the preacher on me. It is a terrible thing when you have more honesty in an AA meeting than you could have in the house of God. It is a terrible thing that we get a place in the house of God where you can't even come in and be honest anymore because people judge and look at you funny. No, this, I refuse to pass your church like this. Anybody ought to be able to come up here and say, I need prayer, I need renewal, I'm struggling with this, I'm fighting with this. There ought to be about 15, 20 people jump up around you and rally around you and say, wait a minute, we're not going to kick you when you're down. We're going to help you up. We're going to help you up. We're going to help you up. Somebody say amen. All right, let me give you this real quickly. Listen, on the day of Pentecost, when, when God poured out the Holy Ghost, the Bible said that there was 3,000 added to the church, and um, they all filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And uh, I, I want to give you a couple of things here to, to be able to look in the mirror and look at yourself tonight, look at us tonight, and make sure that our heart's where it needs to be. Is that all right? I got three points, and we're through. Number one, the Bible said, and all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. They committed themselves to the apostolic doctrine. So when they got saved, the first thing that happened in their life is they loved the Word of God. And, and all of you can testify, if you've ever been saved, that there was a time that you really loved preaching, you loved the Word of God. I, I want to ask you tonight, do you still love the word? Don't answer. Do, do you still love the word? Do you still love preaching? Do you still, because if, if you're losing that, then maybe you've left your first love and you need to come back and get renewed in the spirit of the Lord. Because when we first got saved, we loved the word of God. We love preaching. We love having church. Can I get a witness? And then the Bible said, and all the believers met together in one place. And shared everything they had. And they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Point number two. There was a spirit of giving that came on them. I, I need you to hear this. I have seen people that when they get cold in their heart, so does their giving. If your giving has changed and you're not paying your tithing anymore and you're not sowing your offerings anymore, I'm, I'm telling you now as your pastor... That over the years, I have learned that is a symptom of being on the road to backsliding. It is true. It is true. And if you will look in the mirror for a moment, you will know that when you were revived and anointed and loving Jesus, you were a giver. Come on, somebody. You were a giver. You say, why are you preaching this? It's because I feel the Holy Ghost saying that there's some folks that might be going down the road to backsliding. And before you get to a position where can't nobody reach you, I want to stop on a Sunday night and tell you, you don't have to backslide. You don't have to get hard. You can look at this word and say, wait a minute. I need a revival. I need the church to pray for me. Elder, get that all. Lay hands on me. Oh, give God praise. So they loved the word of God and they, they had a spirit of giving them. Not just hiding, but giving of themselves. Loving people. Love, uh, loving to help people. Hmm? The Bible said, and they worshiped together at the temple each day. I love that. They was in the temple every day. I love that. Not in my time, I don't believe. I was born in 69. I don't believe in my time. But there was a time, I hear, where the church doors were open all the time. Is that true? That any, any, any day, hour of the day, you could come into the church is open. Now, I know it's hard to do today. You got so many thieves, they'll steal from the church now. You know what I'm saying? And, Used to the church and the pastor and people were, had reverence and fear. Come on, somebody. But I love that. I love that, that daily, they, every day they was in the temple and in the homes. Amen. 
doing the Lord's Supper, sharing their meals with great joy and generosity. In other words, they love coming together and worshiping God. They enjoyed having church. And can I tell you that, that, that number one, loving God's word and, and having a spirit of giving on you and, and enjoying coming to the house of God. Amen. These things were on a, we, in us when we first got saved. And I don't care if it's been two years, 10 years, 15 years, 30 years. You don't have to lose that if you don't want to. Now, I, I promise you, there's been times I'm through that I've got hard. I've been frustrated. But the thing that helped me, not only the Lord, but I was honest with it. I didn't have a problem reaching out to Brother Chris or, or my mother-in-law or my father-in-law. I said, hey, listen, I need prayer. I need, how many times have I told, will you please come? I call him in my office. I need you to lay hands on me. I'm not ashamed. You know why? I got to make this. I got to make it to the end. I didn't get in this to lose out. I got in this to finish. Anybody get in this thing to finish? Anybody get in this? Come on, stand and give God praise. Stand and give God praise. You ain't got to lose this. You don't have to backslide. No, put the brakes on it. Make a U-turn. Come on, somebody love the Lord. 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 What did the scripture say? Judge not, lest you be judged. He said, first, help me, cast the beam out of thy own eye that you may see clearly to cast the mote out of your brother's eye. So what he said is before you go judging, make sure you've been through the process that you'll know how to judge and help people and not kill them. He didn't say don't judge. He said wait until you get the beam out of your own eye that you can see clearly on how to help your brother. Come on, am I preaching? Now, I want to say this real quickly and we're going to pray. But I thank God that I've had a mother-in-law that has had no fear with me and talked to me when I needed to be talked to. I didn't like the talking. I remember one time she called me and she told me I need to get the love of God in my heart. I got so mad I wanted to hang up the phone and tell her, I got the love of God in my heart. I did. I got the love of God. <laughs> she loved me. And I'm going to tell you, no, no, I'm, I'm being serious. I thank God for someone who would get in my face and say, uh-uh, you know that ain't right. I know it. I know. And, and I'm telling you tonight, I thank God that's more valuable than anything else in my life. Money, any, no, no, no. Having somebody who would look me in the face. And can I tell you, elders, Brother Chris, you've been through the process. You know how to judge and help people. Brother Shelton, you've been through the process. I, I trust you guys. If, if we had to have counseling, I would trust these guys to counsel anybody. I'm telling these elders right now, and I'm not just talking to the men, I'm talking to the women. It is our responsibility to get in some people's faces every and with love. You know what I'm saying when I say this? And say, listen, I'm worried about you. I'm worried. I don't like what I'm seeing. Come let me pray with you. And I'm going to tell you, and in our spirit right here, every one of us, you might get mad like I get mad. You may stop your feet and, and hang up your telephone. But if you got any Holy Ghost in you at all, amen, you'll come to your sins and say, wait a minute. That man loves me. That woman loves me. That church loves me. Wait a minute. Come on. Everybody needs somebody who will talk honestly to them. Somebody say amen. I know we can make it if we do it together. 
if we do it together, we can make it. If we do it, come on, if we do it together, we can make it. Somebody say glory. I tell you what, if you don't mind, I, I, I'd rather do this tonight. If you don't mind, it felt so good this morning, I want to do it tonight. I'd like for you to reach over with a, a, another brother. And I'd just like for you guys to pray one for another. And maybe a sister, reach over and find another sister. You can get out of your pew. Amen. And find someone and love somebody. And amen. And we, we, <laughs> this ain't no time to rebuke. This is just a showing of love. And come on, together we can do this. And I'm going to tell you, if, if I was a young person in here, and I'm talking about with the Lord, I'd find me an elder and say, please talk to me. Talk to me. Be honest with me. Don't you listen. I got to have you in my life to make it. I got to have you in my life. To, I can't do this. I need the pastor. I need the elders in my life. I need, oh, God, I need a church family. 